Sup all, JC3 here, the Baller of YouTube, the general. Welcome to Topic Tackle, and my take for today is on the one player that Tim Duncan has a losing record against in the playoffs. Start making those guesses now. Thank you for all the support you continue to show, and if you want more Topic Tackle videos like these, then give this video a thumbs up and leave your feedback in the comments down below. I will definitely be down there reading and responding to your comments on this one. So I'll start by saying that I have nothing but respect for Tim Duncan. You know sometimes when a player drops 30 in a game under the radar and the commentators say, man, that was a quiet 30 tonight? Well, that's basically Tim Duncan's career. I mean, look at all he accomplished. You wouldn't have known that Tim Duncan accomplished all that he did if you were a casual basketball fan because he simply went about his business. And when you hear about so many players causing problems in the locker room or getting in trouble off the court, it was refreshing to watch and see a superstar like Tim Duncan just work on his craft, stay out of trouble, and win. And he won a lot. So because we know Duncan for being a winner, who is the one player that he and the Spurs lost to most often? It's not Kevin Durant, although Duncan has an 8-10 and 10 playoff record against him. It's not large enough in the loss column for KD to be that one player. And it's not LeBron. Duncan has a sizable win advantage over James. Duncan's playoff record against common Western Conference foes like Steve Nash and Marc Gasol are in his favor. But there was one Western Conference foe that he lost 4 of 6 career playoff series to and only has a 12-18 and 18 career playoff record against, and that's the Mamba himself. Kobe. Now what you might be thinking, well Kobe had Shaq, come on. Well Shaq and Duncan are actually even against each other in all-time playoff matchups. With Shaq, Kobe won three playoff series to Duncan's two when the Spurs and Lakers faced off, but what pushed Kobe to 18 wins over Duncan was the 2008 Western Conference Finals, a 4-1 victory for the Lakers over the defending champion Spurs. Kobe was killing it, putting up 29.2 points per game, 5.6 rebounds, and 3.8 assists on 53.3% from the field to will the Lakers back to the finals for the first time without Shaq by his side. I feel like we forget this series because the Lakers went on to get smacked by Boston in the finals, but you have to think about the motivation that fueled Kobe to make it back there and prove to everyone that he could win without Shaq. In game one, the Lakers were down by as many as 20 when the MVP Bryant led the comeback starting in the third quarter. Down the stretch, Duncan tapped back his miss to tie the game, but Bryant won the game for LA on a pull-up jumper on the next possession. Fast forward to game five and the Spurs were up big again early, but you know what happens next. Kobe. And Kobe again, and more Kobe, and the Lakers made it back to the finals. This was an impressive feat for Bryant to pull off too, considering that the Spurs, although they didn't have the better record that year, had the better team that had just won a championship the year before. When both players retired, many compared the two, trying to decide on who was greater all time, and it's honestly hard to say. Kobe was and is more popular, but does that mean he is better than Duncan? So let me know what you think in the comments down below. Who is the better player all time, Kobe or Duncan? and tell me why. Remember to subscribe, like, and leave your feedback in the comments down below. We'll be back with more Topic Tackle soon. JC3 out.